Hello and welcome. Today we are in the tier 10 US battleship, the Vermont. We're playing a match on the map Shatter and today I'd like to show how a push effectively gets thwarted. See, when both sides start a match, they tend to get closer to one another. Effectively, they're both trying to push towards one another to see which side breaks first. And uh, you're gonna see how the enemy's push over here on this side basically disappears. So I saw the uh, hipper at the start. I took a shot because, of course, you should take a shot, right? <laughs> and I landed two citadels from the very first salvo on the hipper. That's 31k damage. That basically knocks out the hipper from the entire fight right here, right? What's the hipper gonna do with her less than 6,000 HP? She'll, she'll get taken out by a DD. After that, I take a shot on the Brindisi because, well, she has more HP and the hipper keeps disappearing. I aim slightly higher because I expect the Brindisi to start kiting away. Also, the Oshina actually did finish off the hipper. Brindisi is smoking, but it's a little too late on that front. And we hit another subtle hit. By the way, three shell hits, three citadels. I'm liking where this is going. But now think about this from the enemy's perspective. I mean, look at the minimap, right? Count our ships. It's me, the Vermont, an Amagi, a Mainz, a Benham, and a Kleber. The enemy has uh, the Yamato, a Bismarck, a Merka, Kitakaza, and the one third HP Brindisi, right? So right now, it's actually not so bad. It's, uh, what is this? Five ships of ours and one, two, three, four, five ships of the enemy. But initially, they actually had a numerical advantage, right? They had six ships to our five. But now, I hit, hit the Bismarck for 30,000 damage from a salvo. So now the Bismarck is at half HP too. And we haven't taken much damage so far. Effectively, the enemy's push is dead in the water. They're gonna turn around and start kiting away. Because the Bismarck just saw their uh, hipper taken out, their Brindisi got hit, and she even lost half of her own HP. She turns around and sails away. And this effectively ends the push, because they can't keep going forward. They don't have the numbers anymore to be able to fight this. Because if they just continue on pushing, they'll get taken out by the Benham, the Kleber, Amagimi, the Mainz, you know, stuff like that. And if the CV joins in, which she is right now, it gets even worse. So effectively, this ends the push on the enemy side here. Which also means that we probably shouldn't chase, because they're probably likely to retreat entirely into the corner. I do see the Brindisi, but I think she's gonna be a little too slippery to hit. But that was my initial thought. You know, looking this over, I think Brindisi would have been a better shot here. But it's fine. Hitting the Yamato is worthwhile too. One thing about the Yamato though, she does have excellent protection against long range salvos. It's extremely difficult to sit at a Yamato from long range. She can basically sit broadside on to, well, anything. And it's incredibly unlikely that she ever gets Citadel from long range. Unlike basically every other battleship, for most battleships, the further you get, the easier it gets the Citadel, because shells just arc down. Oh wow, are we gonna get the Maka as well? That would be excellent, because she does have 12 kilometer torps. Goodbye, Maka. So, yeah, effectively, now the enemy is in full retreat. There is absolutely no chance they're gonna push anything over here anymore. And this is exactly how pushes tend to get stopped. You get a few ships that get knocked out. Usually it's by torpedoes though. But you get a few ships that get knocked out. A few more that get uh, hit so hard they turn around to retreat. And that's it. That's the push gone. Because remember, the enemies had the numbers on this side, right? Which means that on the other side, our team ha should have the numbers. Well, I say should. Looking at the minimap, it's not looking as rosy as you'd imagine, but still. I mean, it's a uh, 11 versus what, seven? So perhaps we're all right. And by perhaps, I mean, we're definitely all right. It's unlikely we're gonna be able to kill this Yamato anytime soon. I think it's an extreme mistake to try to chase. Same with the Bismarck. 
they'll just keep going further and further away. Because eventually Yamato will outrange us, right? We could run her into the corner, but imagine how long that takes, especially in a ship like the Vermont that moves at the uh, speed of a snail. A very fast snail, but still a snail. So it would be better to focus on the other side. This is why I kind of like fighting more towards the middle of the map as a Vermont, because if you need to change sides who you're fighting against, you can do that more easily. But here, I felt like I needed to come over here because, you know, I was supporting my tier 8 allies, Yamagi and the Mainz. Although it seems that with the Klebe and the Benham, perhaps that was unnecessary. Bismarck is definitely the better choice at this kind of range though, if we can hit of course, because the shells take a whole while to get there. And I haven't really mentioned this much, but I do it all the time. So if you're fighting at these kinds of ranges, regardless what ship it is, you should always turn when you have shells incoming. It doesn't matter if you're turning away, if you're turning in, you should basically always do some kind of evasive, ac evasive action because even a little bit of a nudge can put your ship off by enough to make at least some of the shells fall into the water or to go too high, go over your bow or, you know, just hit your superstructure. Basically anything, even if it's a super slow ship with super poor maneuverability, it's still worth its while. I mean, look, that Yamato is turning. I know she's turning. Yet, I am pretty certain those shells are mostly going to miss because of the turn. Most likely, they'll simply just go over the bow, though. Because when a ship turns like that, she starts slowing down. Okay, so we got one over penetration. <laughs> That's, like, basically nothing. Yet, had she sailed straight ahead, she probably wouldn't gotten hit by, I don't know, two or three shells. That's something you should always do. Whenever somebody fires at you, you have to change course because the uh, aim assist that the game has built in will try to get the shells exactly where the game predicted your ship's future position is going to be. So if you changed your course or, well, your future position, you're much, much more likely to be able to avoid it. Bismarck's actually turning in rather than out. Kind of surprising. But this is the curse of the slow ships. It takes so long to reposition. I mean, we still got shots to fire. If I didn't, I would have probably just sped through all of this. I did think the uh, CV might have come towards me, but no, apparently not. I still did use my defensive fire, and since the planes are still around, and there's no really other viable target around me, I'm gonna just keep defensive fire up. So, for those who don't know, you can if you want to put your defensive fire on cooldown as quickly as possible, what you can do is turn your anti-air off and turn it on again by pressing the P key, and this will put it on cooldown immediately. But obviously, that was pointless at this point. <laughs> Wait, did we just get the Citadel on the Minnesota? Wow. I am surprised. I'm also surprised that the FDR actually went for me rather than the Amagi next to me, but I suppose maybe more fire damage, bigger ship, harder to dodge. Might be some reasons. I think that Worcester is going to eat the torp. No, apparently not, but one of the gunboats is probably going to finish her. I think I should take a shot on the Bismarck. 18 kilometers should be close enough that I should much more reliably be able to hit the target. Oh, by the way. The thing I mentioned about turning, if you're really close range, you might want to pre-turn a little bit. Because when you turn, your ship slide a little in the direction that you you were going initially. And that can also throw aim off, because uh, if you're aiming really close range, shells will go very much exactly where you aimed them at. Okay, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but they'll usually go where you were aiming at. And in those cases, it can be extremely helpful to be slightly off the mark by sliding. And because of that, the shells are likely to just dump into the water. Wow, the enemies have actually knocked off quite a few more ships. And by the way, that Yamato is still alive. I mean, that retreat over there, the abandonment of the push was the right choice after, you know, the cruisers got knocked out. And I'm actually surprised that they survived this long. 
Usually something ends up chasing them, but I suppose the Amagi came away with me, and so did the destroyers. I mean, look, the Klebea and the Benham are still alive. The only one that we've lost of, of our push is actually the Mainz. Okay, we just lost the Klebea as well. Wait, did we always have a Yoshino with us? Maybe we did. I don't remember. Maybe I didn't notice the Yoshino. So maybe it was a 6 versus 6 after all. Well, whatever. I mean, it's close enough, right? Because even if it's even numbers, it's entirely possible that one side gets an advantage. I don't really like my position too much, because I am kind of showing side to the Yamato, and Yamato can absolutely hit me hard here, but when I say hit hard, I mean like 20k damage or something, not more than that. She just got spotted, so she probably fired her guns. I'm turning a little, slowing down as well. Yep, there are the shells. Okay, this hurt. <laughs> this hurt a lot more. Because I reacted too late, right? But I still took 24k damage, but... Oh well, it happens. I should have reacted earlier, taking my own advice. But let's return fire anyway. Okay, so Shimakas is gonna come out from that gap in front of us very soon, so I'm gonna launch my scout plane to be able to perhaps spot the Shimakaze and then maybe get a little bit of a warning before she actually strikes me. But I mean, at this point we're winning so hard that I don't really care if I lose my ship, so I'm just gonna take the risky action that gets me the most amount of damage possible. Okay, so Shima is gonna come in front of me immediately, and then I'm gonna blast her. Okay, almost there. I think I should just pre-aim here. Yep. Oh no! She just disappeared. Okay, she'll appear in a moment though. Wait, what? Why did she appear there? Did you see that when she appeared? What the hell? Whoa, what? What? What the hell was that? Uh, let's rewatch that. So the Shimakas is invisible. And look at where she spawns. What is this Romulan cloaking though? She basically appeared almost a ship length away from the damn rock. How can it take this long to damn spawn? I mean, I have noticed this issue at other times too. Sometimes it seems that enemies see me before I see them. Like, I know they'll be there, but the rendering for me happens at the time when the enemies have already put their shells into the air or something along those lines. And that's really frustrating, and I wonder why that is. Because obviously, you know, if the enemies can see me properly, then it's only on my side. But perhaps that's just confirmation bias on my end. But seriously, this rendering here was absolutely horrendous. If I had been like a Yamato here, I might not actually have been able to take that shot on the Shimakaze. Because my turret reverse would have been slow enough that I just couldn't have fired on her. Also here we see another problem in effect. We're not getting the end screen. So hopefully we'll get the actual end screen here. Okay, thank god. Sometimes it says that you can't actually see any of the results. So, 149k damage. A bunch of citadels, sank four ships, 1914 base XP, but I think the most important part is that I got the citadel hits really early on and I thwarted the push on the enemy side. I mean, look at that hipper, right? She's at the very bottom and the Brindisi is in the middle. Both of those games were kind of cut short because of what I did early. Well, I got lucky, to be honest, but still. Because of that, both of those, or that push, got thwarted, and they had very little chance on that side, because both of their cruisers got knocked out so early. Anyways, these are the commander skills that they used. Emergency Repair Specialist, Grease the Gears, Adrenaline Rush, Emergency Repair Expert, Concealment Expert. Then instead of Basics of Survivability, I actually took Enhanced Anti-Torpedo Protection, and then Fire Prevention. The reason why on the Vermont, because the Vermont's uh, torpedo belt is absolutely enormous. It covers such an incredibly large part of the ship that I figured that this might be worthwhile. Uh, because having a stronger torp belt makes you more resistant to floodings and, well, it makes you more resistant to torpedoes as well. And remember, the higher your torpedo protection damage reduction, because this is a flat uh, increase, the greater the advantage from it. I mean, look at the size of this torp belt, right? It gets almost to the very front and almost to the very rear. If it hits any part of that, the torpedo that is, it will uh, account for the torpedo protection belt. On most ships, the torp belt is more towards the middle, but on these uh, 
I don't know what you'd call them, super dreadnoughts, mega dreadnoughts. The torp belt is absolutely enormous, even if it's not the thickest. Yamato, for example, is thicker. Still, it's really big, which covers a lot of the ship and ends up being extremely useful. And I've also realized that maybe we're going a little too heavy on the fire prevention stuff. So I've been thinking of uh, swapping some of that away on some of the battleships I've been playing. Upgrades wise, it's uh, dispersion, concealment, damage control, turret traverse. Mostly because none of the other stuff make too much sense. The secondaries on the ship are dreadful. The AA guns modification doesn't really do all that much and you obviously don't really need more range because you already have 24.5 kilometers. Getting more range than that is... Um, the shells take too long to get there to actually hit anything, so maybe if you're fighting a CV or something, other than that, not really worthwhile. Especially since you have a damn scout plane as well, which would give you almost 5 kilometers extra range when you need anyway. Then, well, damage control and main arts modification 1. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support. And I hope I'll see you guys next time.